Our main character is Wakana Gojo, a high school guy living with his grandpa. He has a very deep passion and love for creating Hina dolls because it's his family's business, which of course doesn't make him a popular kid in school. He actually has no friends. Relatable. In class, while he's being depressed, a girl falls on his desk, hitting her head. This girl's name is Marun Kitagawa. She gets up and walks away to talk with her friends. After class, Gojo has cleaning duty with his classmates. He's left alone to clean because he just lets everyone else trample over him. Suddenly, Marin enters the room and helps him clean up. He is surprised and asks her what she's doing. She tells him that she actually also has cleaning duty this week. She asks Gojo where the rest of the classmates are that were also supposed to be on cleaning duty. Gojo explains that he let them leave thinking he would clean up all by himself. And then Marin calls Gojo a bitch and tells him he needs to stand up for himself more. A couple days later, Gojo is sitting in his room and pondering about what Marin told him, realizing she was completely right. He also finds out his sewing machine doesn't work anymore. So he decides to use the sewing machines in his school. While sewing and talking with his doll like a creep, Marin enters the room, being amazed by the fact that Gojo knows how to sew. She also finds out about Gojo's passion for Hina dolls and surprisingly doesn't bully or make fun of him, but actually compliments the doll's face. So anyways, Marin starts stripping. While she's stripping, Gojo has turned around and is having a panic attack, basically. Turning back around, he sees Marin in a different outfit. We find out that Marin is a huge weeb and likes to cosplay, but she isn't very good at making cosplays. After Gojo roasts her pathetic attempt at making her cosplay outfit, Marin begs Gojo to help her. He agrees, and this is the start of their relationship. Marin explains to Gojo that she wants to cosplay Shizuku Tan, a character from an Eroge game called Slippery Girls 2. So Marin is also an avid gooner, but he does admire how passionate she sounds while explaining the Eroge game. She gives him a magazine on the basics of creating a cosplay, but because of it being late, they decide to meet up another day to start working on it. The next day, she pulls up to Gojo's crib unannounced because she's too eager to start working on the cosplay. But it's alright because she brought cheesecake. She wants him to take the measurements for the cosplay. But of course, Gojo starts acting like a little bitch. Because, like a usual male anime character, he cannot interact with women. Marin tells him to chill out and reveals that she has a bathing suit underneath instead of her underwear. Which I don't understand how that changes anything, but he forces himself to take the measurements. And this is one of the greatest scenes in the whole show. After struggling with his inner demons, he finishes taking the measurements. Marin gives him both of the Slippery Girl games so he can truly understand the outfit they're going for. Marin then leaves. Later, Gojo's grandpa walks in on him while he's gooning to Slippery Girls. After his night of gooning, Gojo experiences a wet dream about Marin in her cosplay teasing him and calling him master. He wakes up and goes to school thinking about how he's going to be able to face Marin after his dream. To his surprise, at school, Marin actually acts friendly towards him. And what does he do? Starts ignoring her. Truly a man of unmatchable riz. After ignoring her all day, Marin finds and questions Gojo on why he's ignoring her. He explains that he finds their relationship dynamic weird, especially since they're not friends. Marin explains that they actually are friends, and they had to go shopping for materials for the cosplay. Marin is thankful that she has Gojo to help her choose the right materials, and Gojo feels good about him actually feeling useful. While heading home, they both share more about each other's passions, bonding even more, and Marin also tells him that she would like to go to an event with her cosplay in two weeks, which leaves him stressing. At home, his grandpa greets him when he gets back. His grandpa sees that he has a pair of women's stockings in his bag and goes into shock, falling backwards, leaving him hospitalized. While being at the hospital, Gojo's cousin arrives offering his grandpa to stay with her for the two weeks of recovery he needs, leaving Gojo to take care of the store on his own. After a couple days, Gojo explains to Marin why he's been absent from school. She offers to help him out with cooking and stuff, and of course, like any sane man, he denies her. Unbeatable Riz. After getting denied, she offers to exchange contact info so they can at least stay in touch. After getting each other's numbers, while walking through the hallway at school, they stop at a bulletin board, where he sees the announcement for midterm tests, which are also going to make it harder for him to finish the cosplay for Marin. That evening, while at home, Gojo gets a call from a tourist who wants a tour of the doll shop. He reluctantly agrees, even though he really doesn't have time for it, because he He's a bitch. God is really cock blocking him right now. For a while, Gojo is struggling to fulfill all of his obligations and promises. After the exams, he bolts home, ignoring Marin completely. Later, she goes to visit him, bringing along a beef bowl for him. While outside the house, she notices that all the lights are off and assumes he's spending time with his grandpa, while actually he's just sitting depressed in the dark. After some flashback memories, he pulls an all-nighter and finishes the outfit for Marin. Marin shows up and get ready for this. She didn't actually plan on going to the event that he rushed to finish the outfit for. But instead of Gojo going psycho, he's actually relieved. Marin sincerely apologizes and is moved by Gojo's determination on helping her. They decide that she should put it on and see if there are any adjustments that should be made.
scene. After a cosplay equivalent of a suit up scene, she's now turned into Shizuku Tan and she loves it. Gojo after seeing her in the cosplay compliments her and Marin decides that they should take some photos of her in the cosplay. Gojo finishes taking photos of her and she decides to upload them on her social media accounts as well as suggesting that they should head to a cosplay event the next day because of her newfound motivation in going. The next day Marin is amazed by all the cosplayers while of course Gojo doesn't feel as comfortable because he's surrounded by a lot of women. So to ease his anxiety they go to a place where there are mostly people doing photo shoots. Marin also gets her first photo shoot with a photographer but soon she gets a line of photographers wanting to take pictures of her. This isn't unusual until you remember this is a 15 year old girl dressed up as a character from a Naroge game. While she's getting exploited, I mean photographed, Gojo is thinking about the fact that now their relationship is gonna end because he did good on his promise and created her her cosplay outfit. After being done with the photo session, Marin rushes back to Gojo. She tells him that she's happy that he didn't leave because her clothes were falling off. What happened was she felt like her boobs needed to be bigger so she wore double new bras which now made her feel like her boobs were gonna burst. Gojo didn't create the outfit with this in mind, not only that but she was also suffering from heat exhaustion. So they go to a different location inside a nearby building he helps her cool off. Also making adjustments to reinforce her clothing. They head back where Marin continues her photo shoots a little bit more and after the event they both ride the train to get back home. Where Marin surprises Gojo asking him what cosplay they're making next. Gojo is surprised and happy. She also confesses that she has 51 characters she wants to cosplay as. Gojo tells her that he's down. Marin also notices that Gojo is tired and tells him to take a nap. While being half awake and half asleep he calls her beautiful which is a word Gojo only uses for things that are very special to him. Marin remembers this fact and is astounded. At Gojo's house they wash out Marin's wig. During that Gojo's grandpa returns and is finally informed about their relationship with one another. This is also the time that Marin realizes that she actually has feelings for Gojo. She stays over for dinner where they talk about their parental situations finding out that Marin's diet consists of basically frozen ready to eat meals so she's offered to have a dinner at their place from now on. Of course she accepts. After eating Gojo walks her to the train station and they say goodbye to each other. On a rainy day there is a young girl taking shelter at Gojo's house. Gojo returns home and gets informed of there being a guest here to see him. Gojo was paranoid that his grandpa might have let in a burglar, goes to confront the girl and walks in on her naked after she was taking a bath. Rare Gojo W moment. But after seeing this he has a flashback about Hina dolls. Common Gojo L. Back to the present moment he gives her some juice and they introduce themselves to one another. The girl's name is Sayuna Inui. She goes to a different school and despite her childlike appearance is actually older than Gojo. She has come to him because she saw Marin's cosplay posts and would like him to design a cosplay for her. Gojo declines to help her at the start but after a bit of emotional blackmail he agrees. She also informs him that her cosplay name is Yuyu, a cosplayer that Marin admires. You might be wondering how did she know that Gojo designed outfit or where he lived? Well she's a stalker. Eventually Marin arrives for dinner. She meets and immediately bombards Sayuna with questions and compliments. Once Marin calms down Sayuna requests that Gojo creates a cosplay outfit of Shion Nikaido's Black Lily outfit. It's a character from the anime series Flower Princess Blaze. She explains the character to Gojo and also bonds with Marin over their love for cosplay. Marin proposes the idea of them doing a group cosplay. At the start Sayuna rejects the proposal. However after being persuaded by Marin and Gojo by helping with the studio renting costs she planned on getting, she agrees. After dealing with that issue Gojo tries to find a way to watch all of the Flower Princess Blaze anime so he can have a more in-depth understanding of the characters outfits. Guess he hasn't heard of pirating anime. No need to worry though because Marin offers him her complete box set of the series. The following day Gojo makes his way to Marin's house to retrieve the box set. However Marin convinces him to watch it at her place so he doesn't have to carry the heavy load back home. Around dusk, back at his house, Gojo contacts Sayuna to discuss the cosplay. While they're talking about cosplaying, Gojo finds out that Sayuna's sister is involved with her cosplaying, being her photographer. Gojo, wanting to get better at taking pictures, asks if her sister could teach him. They decide to meet up at a family restaurant. Marin also learns about this meetup and tags along. And we get introduced to Sayuna's sister. Her name is Shinyu Inui, a tall big boobed girl who surprisingly is the younger sibling of the two. Sayuna reveals that it was actually her sister who created her social media accounts and took pictures of her cosplay. She brought her camera along. 
and gives Gojo an amateur course on photography. After they're done, Sayuna offers them to come along to scout out studios to rent for their cosplays. They agree, and Sayuna sets the date for when they'll meet up. They meet up on the weekend and start scouting. The first place was an old hospital converted into a photo studio. They bond with each other while assessing the location. The day after, Marin invites Gojo to the beach with her. While at the beach, they not only get their food stolen by a hawk, but get harassed by it as well. After losing the hawk that was bullying them, they sit together and split a burger with each other. After they finish eating, they went and enjoyed the water. After Gojo reflected on something his grandpa told him when he was younger, Marin promised him that they would go to a whole bunch of different places together. Afterwards, they head back to Gojo's place after shopping for materials for the cosplay outfits. Marin also shows off her new swimsuit to Gojo. Every good anime has some booty cheek close-ups. Sayuna comes over and they both try on their cosplay outfits. They finish up putting on their whole cosplays and are pleased with them. However, on the day of the shoot, it's raining. Marin and Sayuna are in the shooting area first. Marin gets a bit bummed about the rain, but Sayuna calms her down by telling her it will be better for taking pictures. Gojo and Shinyu arrive also, shocking them with the fact that Shinyu has a cosplay of her own. Through a flashback scene, we find out that while they were scouting the location, Gojo found out that Shinyu secretly also wanted to cosplay, but because of multiple reasons, she couldn't do it. So Gojo helped her out and created an outfit for her that she could wear. They then take a commemorative photo of the three of them and then frantically prepare themselves for the photo shoot they were originally there for. They take the photos. Sayuna also thanks Gojo for helping her sister out with her cosplay outfit and create a stronger relationship. Later, after the shoot, we see the sisters having a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with each other. At Gojo's house, he's laying in his room and looks at the in-progress Veronica cosplay he has for Marin. We don't actually see her in this cosplay, unfortunately. We only get to see some bonding scenes with them. Later, Marin decides that boy has no drip, which is true, so she surprises him by taking him shopping for new clothes. His fits were ass, but Marin's into him, and because of that, believes he looks hot in everything he wears. They then go get something to eat, and while still walking around, she asks him when he can keep helping her with the Veronica outfit, but he says he won't be helping her anymore because it's too revealing and he can't take it. Common Gojo L. On a different day, while being in a manga cafe, Marin shows Gojo a new slice of life manga she's been reading. The abbreviated name for it being Sakai DK. They decided to do a cosplay of the main character who is a succubus called Liz. The cosplay gets finished off screen and after trying to find a cheap photo shoot area, Marin accidentally books a love hotel. When they arrive at the location, they realize the mistake that was made but still go through it. Gojo is of course spazzing out. Common Gojo L. With Marin being more chill about it, she changes into her outfit and they start taking photos. She even gets on top of him. Rare Gojo W. But when he realizes what position he's in, he starts spazzing out again and ruins it. Common Gojo L. They both leave embarrassed afterwards. After that shit show, one night, Gojo gets a text from Marin, basically telling him that she needs help. The next day, he goes over to her house. Turns out she needed help with the cosplay. She's also a bit bombed out because she was planning on going to a festival with her dad, but he bailed on her because she didn't do her homework. After they're done with the cosplay, they watch a scary movie together. After watching the movie, she finishes her English homework but remembers that she had left her math homework at school. They decide to go and get it. Because this is an anime, going to the school to get her math homework almost ends up with her drowning in a pool because she can't swim. Gojo of course saves her. She promises to take Gojo to a festival, however Gojo reminds her that she needs to finish her homework first before going to any festivals. She finishes her homework and the next evening they head out to a festival together and we get to see the regular festival cliches. We see Marin in a yukata, they walk around enjoying all the food options and they also go see the fireworks together having a romantic scene where they're staring into each other's eyes. But just like any festival episode, Marin's sandal straps broke, meaning Gojo had to carry her. He carries her to a nearby convenience store to get some bandages for her feet, while talking about how much they enjoyed the festival and promised to go to different festivals together again. Later that night, Gojo gets a call from Marin. Turns out she watched a scary movie and can't fall asleep, so they talk on the phone with each other until they can fall asleep. After Gojo falls asleep, Marin confesses her love for him. 